This is the Homestead Journey Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the pursuit of self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. This is episode number 55 of the Homestead Journey Podcast, but this is also being recorded on November 1st, 2020, and you know what that means? That means that this podcast is celebrating its one-year anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's right, folks. We started this journey together back in November of 2019. It was actually November 11th, 2019, but we are going to be celebrating the birthday of the Homestead Journey podcast all month long. And we have got some exciting things that we are putting together to celebrate that I will share with you at the end of the show. So you're going to want to stick around to the very end to find out how you can win some awesome Homestead Journey Podcast merch. We are going to be releasing some merch here in November of 2020. We've got some other exciting things lined up. So stay tuned through the end of the show. And I will share with you everything that we're going to be doing to celebrate the one-year anniversary, the one-year birthday of the Homestead Journey podcast. Folks, when I started this podcast out, I didn't know how long I was going to to go. It was a matter of I was going to go until I felt like I didn't have anything else to say. And who knows, maybe that'll end up being... The topic of next week's show, I don't know. (laughs) But for those of you who are brand new to this podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us here on the Homestead Journey. If you have been with me since the beginning or if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, uh, I know how much time you have available. We all have 24 hours a day, seven days in a week, and so on and so forth. And so the fact that you take time out of your busy schedule to listen to me blather on about homesteading really does mean a whole heck of a lot. Now, my name is Brian Wells. I am coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. Quite frankly, folks, weather-wise, it has not been a beautiful week here on the homestead, and yet it has been. So let me just jump right into it, and let's get right on with this week's homestead happenings, and I will bring you up to date with what we have been doing here on 3B Farm and Homestead. So this week was... Well, it was really kind of an ugly week from the standpoint of the weather. Now, quite frankly, I'm not very heartbroken over it because, as I have shared with you in the past, we had a very, very, very dry summer. And this week, it seems like Mother Nature was attempting to make up for that. Now, (laughs) honestly, I don't know how much rainfall we received this week. What I do know is that it did rain almost the entire week, which means that the pig pens and the duck yards and so forth are just a sopping, soggy, nasty mess. And then to kind of add insult to injury, Mother Nature decided to drop about an inch and a half to two inches of snow on us on Friday. Now, it quickly melted and it's since gone, uh, but that just added to the general overall bleh 
<laughs> that was this week. But we did get some stuff done here on the homestead. And again, a lot of what we're doing now is simply preparing for the winter. And some of that has simply been putting away canning gear. For us, the bulk of our canning season is over. And so this week, the vast majority of the canning gear went downstairs and got put away. In the process of doing that, as I was moving some things around down in the basement, I discovered, unfortunately, I discovered a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, but a number of jars of produce and so forth that was anywhere from 8 to like 15 years old. I haven't practiced very good pantry management. So we're trying to work on that's definitely a growing edge for us. The good thing about having pigs and chickens is that I took some of that and I just simply turned it into bacon and eggs. Not necessarily a bad thing, but on the other hand, I also know the late nights, the energy and so forth that went into canning that produce. And well, yes, we did turn it into bacon and eggs. It was a bit disappointing to me that we didn't eat it. Now, was it bad? Probably not. Could we have eaten it? We probably could have. But my wife, quite honestly, just simply doesn't trust canned goods that old. And so I figured that she probably was never going to use them. And so I might as well just go ahead and take the time, effort, and energy since I had it and go ahead and empty those jars out, wash them up, and now they will be ready to go next year. On Saturday, I also got around to grinding up some peppers. If you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, you would have seen some pictures of those peppers in the grinder. And uh, I got those ground up and... Uh, whew, Tasty, tasty, tasty. It's going to be nice to have those. Those were peppers that I I dehydrated, but I did not smoke, unlike the other ones that I had shared with you several weeks ago, where I smoked them before I ground them up. And so I'll have a little bit of a different flavor profile there than I would have had otherwise. This week, I also learned about something that... I never knew existed. A, a friend of mine at work was sharing with me something that he referred to as a load hauler, I believe. And what it is, is it's simply a truck bed cargo unloader. And that's just a fancy way of saying that it's a piece of tarp that you put down on the back of your truck bed, and then you attach a, a crank to the to the top of your tailgate. And when your tailgate comes down, then you can crank this, this bar around and that rolls up this tarp and it unloads your truck. Now, the load hauler, I think is what he called it, is like our load handler, maybe that's the correct term, is like 120 bucks. But Harbor Freight has a version that they refer to as the haul master that they have on their website for $44.99. And uh, then I had a 20% off coupon. And I also had my tax exempt forms from the farm. And so I was able to pick this thing up for 35 bucks. But the story that I want to share with you is this one. I called the local Harbor Freight, which is about a well, 30 minute drive, 35 minute drive from my house to make sure that they had some of these items in stock. And they said, yes, sir, we have four of them. And so my wife and I jumped in the car and we headed that way. And so I started walking into the store. And as I walked into the store, I was met at the door by an employee who said, sir, are you looking for something in particular? And right away, my thought was, wow. Harbor Freight really has stepped up their customer service. And I'm feeling all important that she would step up and uh, honor me in such a way. 
And then she said, sir, we're closing in two minutes. <laughs> she wanted me to get in, get my stuff and get out. Uh, so I don't know if Harbor Freight's uh, customer service is uh, quite as good as that. I think maybe she was more, well, she was just in a hurry to get home. <laughs> what was very odd is they're operating under COVID hours and we got there at like 6.58 and they closed at 7. I never would have thought that they would close that early. But thankfully, we got there. We got it. Now, the bad thing is that because of the rain, I had some wood chips that were frozen into the bed of my truck. And my plan was to put that haul master, load handler, whatever it's called, to the test yesterday by going down to the town barn and picking up wood chips and bringing them up to the homestead to start dealing with that nasty, muddy mess that is the pig pens and chicken runs and duck runs right now. But I couldn't do it because I had just these big, huge chunks of frozen wood chips in the back of my truck bed, and I just did not feel like chipping them out. So hopefully this coming week, it's supposed to warm up into the 50s and I think be up into maybe the 60s or 70s by next weekend. And so hopefully everything will get thawed out. I'll get the bed of that truck cleaned out. And then I will be able to report back to you next week what my thoughts are on this Hallmaster thingamajig. <laughs> truck bed cargo unloader is the official name. Anyhow, uh, some other things that we had go on this week. We had some of our pigs go to their new homes. We had two of the borrows from that litter that was born in Vermont. They headed to their new home. And in fact, their owner, Greg, is a podcast listener. So shout out to you, Greg. Thank you so much. Uh, Greg shared with me some of the things uh, from the podcast that have been meaningful to him. And I just want to, again, express to you, Greg, how meaningful it was to me to hear that feedback from you. So thank you very, very much. Last thing that I want to share with you as I broke down and got into my second least favorite chore. Is that right? So my least favorite chore is castration. And then after that, it's cleaning up leaves. I've shared with you before, I absolutely hate doing that. But a perspective change has been helpful to me. And that is that I don't necessarily see it as just a waste of time because I'm blowing those leaves into the woods as I used to. But now I gather those things up and I put them in the pig pens and the chicken runs and in the garden and in the compost bins. And I see it now as gathering resources. But it still doesn't make me like it any better. Just being honest. <laughs> All right, let's jump on over to this week's Charting the Course. On last week's episode, I tried to answer the question, help, I've bought a homestead, what's the first thing I should do? And if you listen to that episode, Part of my answer was to say that I don't really think there is a right first step for every homestead, besides, of course, my advice to take a deep breath. But other than that, I don't think there's a right first step for every homestead because each homestead is so unique. And on today's episode, I really want to reiterate that point. So back in August, I read a post over on the artofmanliness.com that really stood out to me. And so I'm going to read it, and then we'll talk about it. I'll also share a link to the article itself in the show notes. The article goes like this, and it's entitled, Sunday Firesides Resisting the Auto-Suggested Life. Start typing a text or an email and the technology will anticipate what you wish to say and generate suggestions for subsequent words and phrases. 
These suggestions are based on the kinds of things most people write next and that you yourself have previously written. Before the digital age, it was possible to take a more romantic view of the individuality and creativity of human beings. But these auto-suggestions remind us that rather than expressing ourselves with frank originality, we largely traffic in stock formulations. There is, of course, an element of efficiency in using language this way, at least when it comes to our more banal communications. But the matter of auto-suggested words parallels the same reality regarding choices with even greater significance. Some of society's options for living represent time-tested traditions, the distillations of centuries of experiments in the art of human flourishing. Many of our mores, however, owe their existence to expediency, conformity, laziness, Practices born from once salient but no longer relevant circumstances are continued from sheer inertia, from the flimsiness of rationalizations. That's the way it's always been done. While we want to believe we exercise radical free will, we very seldom create options anew, but rather select them from a predetermined menu of culturally approved, often strictly dichotomized choices. Right or left, urban or suburban, school, school, or homeschool, but always something that starts in the fall, ends in the spring, and involves a set curriculum, in state college or out of state college, but always college. Which of these soul-sucking white-collar jobs would you like to take? Sounds good, awesome, thanks, no problem. And all of that, by the way, is crossed out. You don't have to follow the path set out by the masses, or even the groove you've worn for yourself in the past. Rather than tapping auto-populated suggestions, author your own hitherto unconceived possibilities. The funny thing is, as I read that article, or I read that post, I don't know if I'd call it an article, but I instantly thought of how that can be true of homesteading as well. If we're not careful, we find ourselves choosing from a list of predetermined menu of culturally approved, often strictly dichotomized choices, organic or non-organic, pastured or sequestered, and the list could go on and on. We end up living our lives not necessarily on autopilot, but on auto-suggested pilot. It's not so much that we're allowing the techocracy's artificial intelligence to guide us, but if we're not careful, we can end up homesteading on auto-suggested pilot. Now, we might not necessarily ask Google what our next step should be in homesteading. But what we might do is ask a group of homesteaders on Facebook. And if we're not careful, instead of living our own homestead life, we can quickly fall into living someone else's homestead journey. You know, there's a fine line between inspiration and appropriation. It's a great thing to draw inspiration from other homesteaders. We can find out what they are doing that works well, or maybe what hasn't worked well, and then we seek to emulate that on our homesteads or avoid making the same mistakes on our homesteads. That's a great thing. But we must always keep in mind that their journey is not our journey. And if we're not careful, we can begin doing things on our homesteads that are a waste of our time, our money, our effort, and our resources. And you know, folks, this isn't something that just affects new homesteaders. I think that all of us, at one time or another, can get sucked into this style of homesteading if we are not careful. Let me give you a couple of ways that I was sucked into homesteading on auto-suggested pilot <laughs> this year. First, I grew things in the garden that I thought we should eat instead of growing what we do eat. In part, it was because as I've watched homesteaders on YouTube or I've listened to podcasts or I've read some books and blog posts, 
Well, I'm supposed to eat kale. I'm supposed to like greens. I'm supposed to eat uh, sprouts. I'm supposed to like all of those kinds of things. We grew a lot of green stuff. Collards and Swiss chard and uh, kale. We didn't eat a whole lot of it. I grew what I thought we should grow instead of growing what we actually do eat. And I know better. I've shared with you that you should grow what you eat, grow what you like. But I kind of got sucked into homesteading on auto-suggested pilot. Secondly, I got sucked into the whole spring, summer, fall, winter gardening thing. Now, there's nothing at all wrong with spring, summer, fall, winter gardening, if that's what floats your boat. But I discovered that does not float my boat, folks. I like having a break in the winter. I absolutely do. And I don't know if I will ever be much more than a one-season gardener. I shared that with you in a podcast a couple of weeks ago. And I think that's all fine and good. But what was it? I saw other people, as I'm following other homesteaders and seeking inspiration. Instead of seeking inspiration, what I did was appropriation. Now, sometimes you try things and you find out you don't like them. And that's not a bad thing. That's not necessarily appropriating somebody else's homestead journey. Again, there's a fine line between those two things. But sometimes we need to take a step back and and look at it and ask ourselves, is this a moment of inspiration <laughs> or a moment of appropriation? Am I seeking to live someone else's homestead journey? Sometimes there's simply just that temptation to keep up with the Joneses. Or maybe in the homesteading world, it's keeping up with the Salatins or the Rhodes or the Colemans or whatever. Whoever it is that you are following or you are um, trying to learn from. But sometimes there's simply a temptation to keep up with the Joneses. And that's not anything that is unique to homesteading. We all know that. Sometimes people have a tendency to go out and buy a bigger house or a faster car or a a prettier car or they're seeking for a different job because they're simply trying to keep up with the Joneses. Let me share with you kind of a funny story of how I got sucked into something like that, totally unrelated to homesteading. Through the Art of Manliness blog a number of years ago, I discovered traditional wet shaving. Now, if you are not someone who knows that terminology, traditional wet shaving is shaving with the shaving soaps and a brush and either a straight razor or a double-edged safety razor. Um, And there's other razors as well that would fall into traditional wet shaving. But it's that style of kind of it's it's laid back and you're not using the the the, the goo in a can and the Gillette 15 blade razor things that they've got out there now you're kind of taking a throwback to how grandpa used to shave and in fact i believe that was the name of the article on the art of manliness shave like grandpa i got into that i fell in love with it and i still am a traditional wet shaver to this day I'm definitely not involved in it as much as I was back in the beginning. You see, I got caught up in this desire to acquire the soaps that all of the popular kids (laughs) were trying to acquire. There was a soap that uh, was coming out and people had talked about it and just hyped it up. It was called Triple X. And everybody had said, it's just such a wonderful soap, and it smells so great, and it performs so wonderfully. And it had been out of stock for a very, very long time. And so the vendor had said they were going to have some stock coming up, and it was going to be on such and such a date. And so I stayed up, and I think it was going to release at midnight. And so I stayed up, 
And I kept refreshing the page, refreshing the page, refreshing the page until that triple X was available. It was in stock and bam, I bought me a tub of triple X. And I was so excited for this triple X soap to show up because I was told it was going to be the best soap ever. It was going to perform awesome and it was going to smell great. Folks, I have never been so underwhelmed by a product in my entire life. The performance of it, in my opinion, was mediocre. It definitely wasn't bad, but it was certainly mediocre. And it smelled like, to me, it smelled like cheap motel bath soap. Now, I had gotten caught up in all of this hype, and I was trying to keep up with the Joneses, the cool guys and wet shaving, and I was so, so disappointed. <laughs> but folks, sometimes I see this happen in homesteading as well, where people uh, are trying to acquire whatever somebody else is doing or do what somebody else is, is doing, and so... So-and-so gets a goat, I've got to get a goat. So-and-so gets this breed of pig, I've got to get this breed of pig. So-and-so gets a cow, I've got to get a cow. And it goes on and on and on and on. And whether it's animals or it's gear or it's a certain approach to homesteading, whatever it is, if we're not careful, we can get caught up in keeping up with the Joneses and we're not the Joneses. So how do we avoid the auto-suggested homestead? Now, some people might suggest that you need to uh, develop a mission statement for your homestead and then develop a five-year plan. And then when something pops up, you ask yourself whether or not that thing jives with your mission statement and fits into your five-year plan. Now, if that works for you, great. But I don't really think in those terms. So here are some of the things that I do, sometimes with great success and sometimes not with su such great success. But some of the things that I do to try to resist the temptation to operate an auto-suggested homestead. The first thing is, is keep a list of things you'd like to learn or accomplish on your homestead. I talked about that in last week's episode. Before you ever start homesteading, you know, in my opinion, you should have developed that list. You should understand or at least have thought about some of the things that you would like to learn, some of the things that you would like to do, some of the things that you would like to accomplish on your homestead. But that's not something that you just do once. In my opinion, that should be a living, breathing document. And if you are inspired by someone to try something new, put it on the list. In Google Keep Notes, and I've talked about that before, Google Keep Notes, I actually have a list of projects I'd like to accomplish in the future. And I'm constantly updating that. I have another list of things that eventually I'd like to build or buy on the homestead. I'm constantly updating that. And then I am constantly reprioritizing things. If I have a new idea about X, Y, or Z, I, I put it on the list and, I, and then I look at the list and I think, well, where would that fit in this list as I think about my journey towards self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability? Is this something that should come before the next step? Or do I need to take this step before I can take this step? And so I'm constantly reprioritizing those lists, but I keep a list both of things that I would like to learn or try on the homestead as well as things that I would like to build or buy. The second thing is set goals for the year. Now, some people will want to do it more frequently than that. Maybe you set goals for the month, um, however it works for you. But set some goals for the year. Preferably, you're taking those goals off of the list that we talked about first. But set some goals for yourself. And then if you are inspired by someone to try something new that maybe wasn't on your list or it wasn't a part of your goals... 
ask yourself, how does that impact my goals for the year? Do I need to tweak my goals? Do I need to change my goals? If I do this, can I still do that? Again, I keep my 2020 goals in Google Keep Notes. Now, I know this is probably going to surprise you, <laughs> but the goals that I set at the beginning of 2020, uh, well, a lot of those have changed. So it's not that you can't change your list of goals. Trust me when I tell you that I did not meet over a half over half of my goals. Uh, 2020 obviously threw us some curveballs. And there were some things that popped up and I said, I need to give priority to this over that. For example, we expanded our garden this year in a way that I necessarily wasn't anticipating. But I put a lot more effort and energy into that than I probably would have if COVID hadn't happened. And some of the other things that I had thought about doing, I put those on the back burner because, well, I felt like that was where I needed to put my time, effort, and energy. So it's not that you can't deviate from your goals. But if you do deviate from your goals, do so in a manner that is thoughtful. The next thing I would say is to be brutally honest about the commitments this new thing will require. Do you really have time to manage a family milk cow? Do you really have the money to buy a new tractor? Do you really have the infrastructure to get goats? Do you really have the land necessary to raise a beef cow? Well, sometimes you need to sit down and have a conversation with your wife or your husband, your significant other, or a mentor because maybe you're too close to it. This week, I sat down and had a conversation with Bonnie, my wife, regarding some of the things that I would like to do with this podcast. Now, I've been listening to some other podcasts on ways to grow your audience. I'm a member of several groups on Facebook dedicated to those ideas. And I had to stop and talk through with Bonnie the time and financial commitments that some of those things would take and whether or not those things fit within what I want this podcast to become. It required some painful and some brutal honesty as to what those things would mean and whether or not the sacrifices would be worth it. And so before you jump into anything new or you start something new just off the fly, be brutally honest about the commitments you're going to need to make with this new thing. But the last thing I would say to you is this. The most important thing, in fact, is this. Remind yourself of what matters to you. When you go to implement something, ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? Imagine if I had done that when planting my garden this year. Brian, why are you planting nine square feet of collards? Do you like collards? Brian, why are you planting four varieties of okra? Do you like okra that much? Brian, why are you planting nine square feet of kale? Do you eat that much kale? Imagine if I had stopped and asked myself those questions. Do you think that I would have gardened differently? I know I would have. Now, it's not that it's wrong to try new things, but if I would have tried one square foot of collards, one square foot of kale, I would have been okay. Maybe one variety or maybe two varieties of okra. If I would have stopped and asked myself the why, it would have kept me from maybe making those mistakes and gardening and homesteading on auto suggest. Now, folks, I'm not trying to be a killjoy. I'm not trying to dampen your enthusiasm, and I certainly hope it doesn't come across that way. What I simply want to reiterate to you is that your homestead journey is unique, and embrace that. Don't try to follow someone else's path. You will never find satisfaction in that. Instead, Pursue the things that bring value and joy to you and your family. Resist 
the auto-suggested homestead. All right, that is it for this episode of the Homestead Journey podcast. If you've enjoyed it, and even if you haven't, I would love to hear from you. You can reach out to me, brian at thehomesteadjourney.net is my email address, or you can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, MeWe, YouTube. The links to all of our social media is in the show notes. Now, as I promised, we are celebrating the Homestead Journey Podcast one year anniversary this month. And so all month long, we're going to be doing some fun stuff. And we're going to be starting right out of the gate with some giveaways. I actually put together a t-shirt store this week. And if you are interested in that, you can go on to teespring.com slash stores slash the Homestead Journey podcast. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But we have some great t-shirt designs, or at least I think they're great t-shirt designs out there. Starting out with two, one is our logo. Underneath it, it says self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. And the other one is paying homage to my grandfather, Malcolm Wells. And it simply says, keep up the good work. I have a couple of other t-shirt designs that are going to be coming out this month as well. So you're going to want to keep an eye out for them. But we're going to be giving away some of those t-shirt designs. And we're also going to be giving away some hand-thrown mugs from the Creek Road Pottery. My brother-in-law, Al, has a pottery in Pennsylvania, and he's going to be making some mugs with the Homestead Journey podcast logo on them. And we're going to be giving all of that away. So how can you enter into this awesome giveaway? Well, first of all, you can enter by sharing the Homestead Journey podcast on social media using the hashtag, the Homestead Journey Podcast. Secondly, if you leave us a review on your preferred podcasting platform, like iTunes, I'm not sure who else allows reviews. So, and there's so many podcasting platforms out there now that we're listed on. Just so I don't miss anybody's entry, leave me a review and then email me, brian at thehomesteadjourney.net, just so I don't miss it. And I will enter you into the drawing for the t-shirts and mugs. Third, you can enter the drawing by going to giveaway.thehomesteadjourney.net slash birthday and sign up. So three easy ways for you to join us in celebrating our birthday this month. And this is going to be going on all month long. So every time you share the Homestead Journey podcast using the hashtag the Homestead Journey podcast, I will enter your name into the drawing for a t-shirt and and or a mug. I've also got some other fun things that I'm working on. I've got some printables that I'm working on that I'm going to be um I'll be talking about more about those throughout the month. So some exciting things there. I've got some other fun things up my sleeve that I think are really going to be a lot of fun. So you're not going to want to miss a, an episode, not that you ever would, but throughout the month of November, we are celebrating the birthday of the Homestead Journey podcast. As always, the music on this episode was provided by Audionautics.com, so a big shout out to them. The Happy Birthday song was provided by BeatDreamer.com, so a shout out to them. And until next time, everybody, keep up the good work. <laughs>